The next talk is upper respiratory tract infection in the pre-anesthetic checkup. What will you do? By Dr. Rajni Sundar, who is currently the senior consultant and head of the Department of Anesthesia in GKNM Hospital, Coimbatore. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity today, especially when Dr. Ravindra Bhatt oration is going to take place. I bring greetings from Kupsaminada Hospital, which is closely associated with Ganga family and the academic activities in the anesthesia department. Now, we all know that this is the most controversial issues in pediatric anesthesia is whether to go ahead with the surgery or postpone the surgery in a child who is suffering from upper respiratory tract infection. So, what is the problem? It is a well-known fact that there is an increased risk of perioperative adverse respiratory event to the extent of seven, seven folds, and this jumps to 12 folds if endotracheal tube has to be used in these kids. So what do you mean by respiratory adverse events? They could range from laryngospasm, bronchospasm, breath holding, oxygen desaturation, atelectasis, strider, or up to post-operative pneumonia. So before you decide what you are going to do with the kid, you should know when to diagnose a child to be having URTI. The child's symptoms may vary from mild sore throat or scratchy throat, mild malaise, sneezing, rhinorrhea, congestion of nose, productive cough, or mild fever. At least two symptoms have to be present before you decide that the child is suffering from URTI. And once you do that, you have to know the differential diagnosis because the, UART, the running nose or allerg could be an allergic manifestation which is non-infectious. It could be vasomotor, especially in a child who has been crying or if a child is having temperature. What we are worried about is infectious origin URTI. It could be viral or it could be a prodromal symptom to be upcoming chicken pox or measles or it could be acute bacterial attack as well. Before going into the clinical aspect, we should know the pathophysiology a wee bit. The pathophysiology can be divided into two. One is peripheral airway changes and then second is airway hyperreactivity. Peripheral airway changes are decreased diffusion capacity, increased closing volume, increased oxygen uptake due to secondary to the inflammation. Why do these things occur? We do not have a clear answer, but could be due to increased secretions and decreased ciliary motility of the airway. And then airway reactivity can be due to mediators, which could be due to inflammation, could be vagal or could be due to tissue factors like neuropeptidase or tachykinase, all of these result in airway hyperreactivity. So before you approach the kid, you should define the problem. Your child may fall into three groups. Group one, where the child is clearly unwell. Unwell means the child may be running a temperature, child will have a malaise, the rhinorrhea will be purulent, cough will be productive, if there is lung signs, there is no doubt that the uh, URI has become LRI. So you cannot go ahead with this case. And the group two, the child would have been perfectly normal when you uh, saw, saw the child for pre-operative assessment. But the parents will be calling from home saying, so in, on the day of surgery, saying that the child has become ill. And then the parents themselves will decide to cancel the case. Or they will say, can you see the child again before the child is taken up for surgery? The group, through, group 3 is the most important one where the URTI has been present for some time and then the child is being on treatment, looks stable on the treatment. What do you do with these children? So very important to have a very good pre-operative assessment. Preoperative assessment can be divided into three stages. History is the most important of it all. Second is the physical examination 
and third comes the lab. Lab may not be of any use on most of the occasions. History, you should consider the presence or absence of fever, cough. Is the patient a known visa? If a patient is a known visa and on top of it is suffering from URI, the child has to go off the list. Is there any similar illness in either the family or in the school? Then you will know the, how this illness is going to progress. Then whether the child is active, eating properly or is the child has become irritable. Most importantly, what is the opinion of the parents? If the parents think that the child is coming down with something big, then the child definitely should go off the list. Physical examination is to see if you could see the discharge, whether it is purulent or clear, whether the cough is productive, is there lung signs. If the child permits, you may do a throat examination. Look for temperature, lab data depending upon how the child is presenting to you. Now, there are two sets of clinical predictors to say whether the child is going to be at high risk of complications or not. One was laid by in 2001 by Palmis et al. It says if the child needs endotracheal tube for the management of the airway, Definitely, it is a high, comp high risk for anesthesia. Then, LMA is preferred over ETT and face mask is preferred over both of these. Then, if the ch again, the parent's opinion is very important. If the child has a history of snoring, it is a high risk. Passive smoking, if one or both the parents are smoker, High chance of child having hyperreactivity airway is there. Induction agent that you are going to choose, thio, halothane is better than thio, CO better, better than halothane, propofol is the best agent. If the child is pro uh, producing sputum, it is a high risk. If the child is having nasal congestion, chances of airway problem occurring is high and the use of anticholinesterases. Tate at all, Tate who is an authority on children coming with URTI for anesthesia, he has also given some predictors or risk factors. Again, ETT has come at the top of the list. He also said, a children who are, above, who are below the age of five and who require ETT are at higher risk. Infants less than six months of age. Premature children, because they already have bronchopulmonary dysfunction and the airway is small, they carry very high risk. Reactive airway disease, a wheezing child, wheezer, and then parental smoking. If the child is coming for airway surgery, for example, tonsillectomy or cleft palate repair, you cannot take them, take any chance. Nasal congestion and copious secretions increase the risk. Now you have to remember certain facts. Incidence of URTI in a children is five to six times per year. And each incidence lasts for about a week or 10 days. And hyperreactivity of the airway is supposed to last for two, to at least for two to six weeks. Then where do you get a child who is cold free in his own, no, one year time? So what do you do? Then another analysis said 2,000 cases with URTI, that is mild URTI, have to be cancelled to prevent 15 cases of laryngospasm. So what do you do? Do you schedule them for the case surgery or do you postpone? You can schedule the case if the runny loss is clear, the cough is dry, the surgery is of minor nature and you have to cancel if the child is small, especially less than one year of age, has a nasal discharge, cough is productive, there is lung signs, fever above 38 degrees centigrade, child is not playing, lethargy, not eating and parents say child is unwell. Now there is some good news also. 
They say children with mild URTI may be safely anesthetized since problem encountered are generally easily treated and without long-term sequelae. And no case of close claim in literature has been implicated with because of URTI. That is, if I remember correct, only one case with URTI uh, died. This child was later found to have viral myocarditis, which can never be diagnosed preoperatively. Now, how do you manage anesthesia? What are your goals? Minimize secretion, minimize airway manipulation, choice of airway, already been mentioned, anesthetic agent. Those who have shifted to desflurane, please remember, desflurane is the most dangerous uh, inhalation agent in this situation. And not only induction, but awakening has to be as smooth as possible. IV access is a must. Just because it is a short procedure, don't avoid or don't omit IV access. Always monitor pulse oximetry and ETCO2. Hydration has to be maintained. Humidification should be taken care of. Suctioning should be done only in the deeper planes of anesthesia. And always be prepared for reintubation or intubation if there is an airway problem. Continue monitoring postoperatively. Dilemma continues. Is it due to litigation that you are scared or it is because of the complication you are scared? Accept or cancel has to be individualized depending upon the patient, procedure and competence of the anesthetist, where the risk can benefit, discuss, involve not only the anesthetist but surgeon and parents and please document what, has, uh, what decision has been taken after the discussion. So this is the summary of what we are going to do. Child with an uh, upper respiratory tract infection, surgery urgent, no question, we have to proceed. No, not a urgent surgery, it is one infectious origin, then you have to think about it. Severe infection, have to postpone for four to six weeks. If general anesthesia is not required, probably you can proceed. If general anesthesia is required, you have to weigh the risk and then decide accordingly. Please remember the goals of anesthesia. To conclude, name of the game is clinical judgment and a degree of good fortune as mentioned by Dr. Berry. Thank you.